Well, we are expecting August 9th, but if he doesn't show up at 6, I'll ask for somebody to assume the chair duties from the gallery. I nominate Charlie. So we are into that. Thank you. Said and I'm not here. facing the window this time. It's your yeah, responsibility. Right. <laughs> automotive drama this time. <laughs> It was crazy. There's a whole new sidewalk up there. Yeah. Yeah. I think he decided he's not going to text and drive and or drink and drive. Yeah, yeah whatever was going on. Yeah. And that clock says before six. That clock says after six. And this one says before six. So two out of three. It's still two minutes till six. Maybe. This is the one we use as the most reliable. 559. Yeah, 559. Yeah. August still has a minute. I do not understand why the computer clock would be slow. Oh, 552? Yeah. That usually signals a system problem. <laughs> it's based on a town. Oh, here's a car. Isn't, aren't these atomic clocks? This one is apparently somehow an atomic clock. I don't know what that means. An atomic atomic clock? Clock? Well, it's supposed it's to be. Uh, Are you sure? <laughs> I think it might just be a double A battery. Yeah, it could be. <laughs> <laughs> I dare you to take it off the wall and look at that. Like my double A battery. Yeah. <laughs> but it's always on time, so we're just going to assume. <laughs> going with it. There he is. There he is. Hello, sir. Look at that. Right outside. Just, just in time to go down. All right. We'll call this meeting to work. Uh, public comments and expectations. Okay. Can anyone go over that? Your thing. Uh, we have some public uh, sitting here with us tonight. Uh, generally invite the public to participate in the meeting as long as you get the attention of the chair to be acknowledged uh, and ask you to introduce yourself so our minute taker can um, uh, correctly report attribute comments. Um, the Planning Commission has the ability to gain control of their meetings if uh, it starts to be disruptive. So uh, disruptive individuals may be asked to leave, uh, but any persistent disruptions can result in meeting being recessed and continued at a later date. Uh, those online wishing to contribute can either use the uh, raise hand function of Zoom, or if you're on the phone, that would be star nine. And then once allowed to speak, you can unmute yourself uh, using Zoom or uh, the star six function. Uh, any public comments that aren't currently on the agenda? Uh, Mary Rapar Stevenson, uh, thank you very much. Um, I'd really like to see the Russell project uh, proceed without waiting on the Plaza project with which might never come to fruition. Um, uh, Russell does need work. Uh, I don't know if you've ever, well, we used to be able to enter through the bottom door there. The curves there are this high. They're dangerous and it really needs to, they really need to be fixed. I know Carolyn took a look at them. We, we have a few curves like that. Uh, I, I've often wondered why the new curves down on Rock Creek are like, they're cut off. They're not smoothed. And they, if you trip over, you're going to take a header. Um, so I don't know if there's a standard design for curves and, uh, and you know, they're in where they meet the sidewalk. But to me, it seems like a nice slope or a, uh, for ADA and that would be much better than these curbs that have sharp corners uh, on there on them, um, especially the one down below by Chevron. Um, everybody will hit that curb at one time or another because it's a right hand turn and it's not a the curb is not uh, smoothed out just like the east one is. The east one is 
uh, smooth and you walk down into the street. The other one is not. I'm not quite sure why. But it would be nice to have a design standard for our curves and uh, not to have them be so high that you could stumble off of it. So, uh, And I want to invite you all to the Plant and Seed Swap, November 9th at the library from 10 to 2. It's the Stevenson Grange number 121. We have a lot of seeds and uh, I don't know if any of you knew Alan Stig up in Carson, a great gardener. He was killed by a drug driver and we, he, we inherited his seeds. So we'll be sharing those with the community and hope to spread them out. Thank you. Before we move on, I just ask a question about what Mary was talking about, the curves. I believe that's within the bailiwick of the public works. So when you say mostly, what does that mean? The, um, there are standards, uh, engineering standards for design of roadways. When those standards are amended, uh, they come to the planning commission to see if the planning commission wants to provide any comment on us, but they're not initiated by the planning commission. Is there a forum to comment other than the planning commission? Um, on public works city um, council project. Yeah. It's the city council you have to go over. Yeah. Okay. But if, you know, in terms of our agenda, if, if there's issues like these standards that you think are significant, uh, that, that are significant, then, you know, there's no reason why we couldn't put it into our work plan to talk about it. I haven't seen the public work standards for the city, and I don't know if WashDOT has different design standards for their facilities in the city, but I would suspect so. So there may be an issue there in terms of what washed up does on working and what the city does on the street. I don't know, but it's, you know, it does affect the public realm, no question. So if we wanted to find out what their standards are, Carolyn, the yeah, okay. public works director could provide that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Be, I'd be interested in looking at it too, Tony. I just never, I haven't yet. So, okay. Yeah. It's worth a look. All right. Uh, if I have a chance to look over the minutes, September 9th. Any meetings? I have, and I'll move it with them. I'll second. A motion and a second. Any other comments? All right. So we'll go ahead and approve those. Uh, new business conditional permit review. Okay. Uh, so every even year to October, uh, we have conditional use permit reviews if there are permits to review. So generally, when you uh, adopt conditional use permits, you attach a review period to those to make sure that any unanticipated um, impacts to the neighborhood uh, can be identified after something has been in operation for a little while and you can bring those applicants back in to re-review it or add additional um, conditions to it and just evaluates uh, what the neighborhood may have to say. So uh, every even October, you have those uh, presented uh, to you, the conditional use permits that were issued in 2020 and 2023 for this. I also have um, some that predated that. One uh, that was issued in 2020 uh, that still, that was amended in the last conditional uh, review cycle. And, uh, and so evaluating how that is doing. And then a few other ones that are just not relevant anymore. Uh, so I've got in here a very short summary of each of these with recommendations um, to close the book, uh, essentially, on those that aren't relevant anymore. That's the murals that uh, the Stevenson Downtown Association was permitted to install on the Clark and Louis building and on the Napa building. Zoning code change uh, allows them to, allows nonprofits such as the SDA to install those without a conditional use permit. And so there's no reason to maintain this on the books if they can uh, achieve that in a different way. Uh, so recommends uh, holding a public hearing at the next meeting to officially close the book on those. Similar situation with the 5440 sign uh, that was um, that, that business is no longer occupying that building. And so the conditions of approval for that state that it's only for that at that address. So 
um, close the book on that one uh, in a similar way, as well as uh, the salon that was permitted on Rock Creek Drive. Uh, the owner of that building, the salon is no longer occupying that spot, and the owner of that building is uh, considering converting those space to uh, permitted use in the zone. And so this wouldn't be necessary at this time, and they could apply for it again later. And we have discussed it with that owner and seem amenable to it, but um, bring that in um, the following meeting. Two other projects are related to the city sewer system. One is the wastewater treatment plant for the expansion that uh, was done there, and one is for the pump station that's on Cascade Avenue near the Ports office building. Those are not yet operational. And so a uh, recommendation for you to either uh, extend that review cycle or consider that review cycle has been completed and not, uh, not bring it up again in 2026. Well, I have since in there. The, the project hasn't been completed, but it's going to be completed. It's going to be completed. So, does, is, does the approved conditional use permit just stand and yes. allow that? So, it doesn't have, we're not talking about a, a, a no. next expiration date here. Right. Okay. Right. Okay. The final one is the Nazarene Church, the um, Bridge Church on Jefferson Street. And that one was uh, reviewed in 2024. The uh, screening that was required for the parking lots at that time, they, they planted some um, bushes along the uh, parking lot. They just had to take the hold, provide a rear screening factor. Uh, the Planning Commission in 2022 uh, amended the uh, permit to uh, be more clear about the screening and, and some expectations for that. They still haven't really taken hold. Um, those applicants have been working hard to meet that condition. It's just not, it seems like a, a futile effort to really keep going with that. And so suggesting that you bring them back again to consider amending that or sort of reducing the requirements or potentially changing it to uh, like guidance to, to fence it or something that they can be successful in. With. I would agree with that. Um, having been there at the previous meeting, we have them come in and have them offer solutions, and then we could all get eyes on it as well to know okay. what would be a good solution. So attached to these are just all of the um, all of those conditional use permits for your review. Uh, usually, I would like to provide you with pictures of the. Uh, projects uh, as they stand today, wasn't able to pull that together. Uh, it's so you want to just go through on uh, one by one and just kind of eliminate the ones that we feel we don't need to address anymore. Uh -huh. um, so I guess uh, CPU 2020-01 is the Nazarene Church and we already Discuss having them come back in and address their screening issue. I think that's probably prudent. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, number two, the potential expansion of a review period for 22 3 and 20 through 1. Um, I don't know that that's something that is, once that's built, it's not something that's going to change. The ownership's not going to change. They're not going to put a bigger sign up. Yeah. You know, what do you guys feel on? Well, that? this is the sign, not the murals, right? No, these, these are, are the the city wastewater, the city wastewater, wastewater pump station. Oh, sorry. Sorry. And, uh, yeah. oh, yeah. No, they're not. Once they're once they're built, they're built. And they're going to be known for a long time. And you're right. But yeah, so just pushing it forward to the few years from now. Yeah. Yeah. I have no problem with that. Yeah. And I ask a question: It's a conditional mm -hmm. use permit, and it's not. Has nothing to do with the building permit. So once the conditional use permit is granted, there's no inspection or anything that takes place after that. Is there a reason to keep the permit open at all? The permit provides them with a land use entitlement. So yeah. continue using the land for that purpose indefinitely or until uh, it's revoked or. Uh, so if it's an indefinite permit, right? Then are we going to leave it open indefinitely for that use? 
See, that's the thing. I mean, conditional use permits are for a use that wouldn't normally be permitted in that zone. Right. Okay. So that it runs with the applicant, not with the property. Yeah. So then what are we doing with these two then? So I think we carry them forward. But don't we carry forward all conditional use permits no. if they're running with the review cycle where once it's operated review cycle. Yeah. So we're just going to bump it for the two year review cycle because they're compliant the the buildings within the works. So as long as everything's moving forward and they're doing everything that they're supposed to, we're bumping it to the next one. Where like the murals are being taken care of, but then you have businesses that have changed that we will do different things on. That makes yeah, sense. I understand the whole the business one. Yeah. I guess I just didn't I the don't wastewater. Quite understand if it's a, a use permit and we granted the use permit and we know the project's gonna finish. What is our what do we actually review to say now we're going to stop this review cycle? Got it. So the there's four criteria that you have to find are true in order to grant a conditional use permit. Um, compliance with current city plans, uh, no substantial reduction of neighboring property values, harmony with the neighborhood that it's located in, and another one, um, advancing the public health and safety. And so if you were to grant a conditional use permit uh, to, I imagine something that's controversial in the neighborhood and you attached conditions to it that you thought was going to um, ensure harmony with the neighborhood it's in, two years goes by, that review period of two years goes by, and uh, you're you're hearing a lot of complaints from the neighborhood, it's not in harmony. So that review period allows you to hold a public hearing, hear those complaints, put those on the record, and modify the conditions of the permit. So, a, you know, a um, crematorium, and you had required something, and it was still spreading ash on the neighborhood, you could require, say, a taller, stack on the, the building to maintain harmony. So what is the milestone then with these projects that get us to end the review period? Depends on the project. Yeah, what's that? Depends on the project. No, these two. These oh, two, the two, the city, two the two city ones. I, I don't see that like I said, I don't see that as a change of ownership. I don't know that anybody's gonna come in and change the nature of a pump station. And so I think that infrastructure aspect of it, if it was something like a sign or a requirement for a fence, fences fall down, trees die, those kind of things. Yeah. So whether it's a finite issue or whether it's something that's more concrete, mm -hmm. I think that kind of would. So with these two, I guess, what are we waiting for to end the review? Well, I think we'd like to see them built. Yeah. And, then, and yeah. then after that first review cycle, if they are in harmony with the neighborhood and all the other aspects, then I would suppose that it probably would just go into, you know, something that we wouldn't have to review every two years. Yeah, I mean, I don't think it's anything like this is going to happen, but in this sort of scenario, the city's permitting its own uses. The public works director could say, wow, we can buy this really great pump and we won't need both pump stations, we just need one. So we'd quash the permit for the site that they're not going to use okay but that's you know that that kind of thing that's why we that's why we wait till the thing's done and even you know in this case you know it's the city city facility you know and and there's always but almost always as a lot of started, some kind of mitigating conditions you know whether it's odor control or trees or the way it looks or yeah, right. you know so accessibility so for people on the yeah you know on the side of the road yeah. so it sounds to be like the milestone to end the review cycle for those two projects is the actual completion yeah, of the project. completion and Correct. compliance with whatever conditions there were right yeah do we actually check compliance at the planning commission or do the staff does and the courts to us yeah yeah so yeah, yeah. That, okay. that was the issue with the hazardine bridge is that they had these conditions sort of screening and the down screening didn't take and so when these are done you'll come back with a report that says all of this yeah is complete yeah and approved yeah this october report is typically longer um than the one that's presented to you tonight that talks about the conditions and whether they're in compliance or not because the only substantive one here was the nazarene church and because my time is taxed with other things you've got sure. a shorter report this you bet okay so the the other ones basically the the murals 
um, I've been said, you know, there's been a change in the zoning code to allow for that. Um, so I would see that our review process for that isn't, isn't necessary anymore. Mm -hmm. It's mm -hmm. not really a, uh, a conditional use anymore. Yeah, I agree. Now it's an outrageous for non profit. So, right. Great. So, I think, do we need to make a motion for that for you, Ben? Or? Um, I don't think I need a motion. I think I understand that you okay. proceed as, as noted here to um, have them all on the agenda. Uh, so allow us to close the book on some of them and extend the meeting period uh, on the average. Yeah, I mean, at a, yeah. I think it's like, well, those were all fine ideas. At, at a higher level, I would say, just looking at this, it, it seems to me that we've got the zoning code about right, you know, the Goldilocks test, in that we're not doing dozens of conditional use permits like nothing works you have to always get a conditional use you know that's one extreme or you never need a conditional use because you can do whatever you want and so we're you know we're in that sweet spot in between the two where an unusual use in a underlying zone you know occasionally will require a condition so it seems to me like the code is about where it should be uh, given that there's half a dozen and the here yeah. so i i that's hard it depends on what the city's growth is. Right. I mean, this is kind of that period post-COVID where there wasn't a whole lot going yeah. on. Yeah. So, and it's kind of slow. It'll, I think it hopefully we'll we'll see a little more um, creative thinking, which is where then these start to take case. All right, uh, old business. I have a quick ask a question. Yes, you, you have 5440 here, but that business is gone now. Um, yeah, I was going to ask. So, what the sign happens? So, down. Sign is down. If you drive past, there's a new sign up uh, advertising the new occupant, um, Asian Fusion Restaurant. Um, to, opening so, Friday. Opening Friday. On Facebook. Everybody's right. on Facebook. Wow. I know when to set up my tent. <laughs> I, I guess I'm just asking, like 5440 is gone. The conditional use is 45440, which was a beer joint. Right, right. And that, so do these new people need a conditional use for something or? Their sign complies with the, the code as is. It doesn't oh, need that okay. sign about standing design at 5440. Okay. Yeah, I've had occasions where signs have been abandoned when the property left, and then it became a big issue of whose responsibility is mm -hmm. it to remove it. And the owner was like, "Well, I didn't, I, I didn't put it up." Right. So then the city's, you know, basically said, "If we take it down, we're going to charge you for that." Mm -hmm. and they they managed to take it down. <laughs> yeah, it's always something. Mm -hmm. Uh. Any old business? No old business this week. This Any discussion? <laughs> so the first street overlook project of the staff report um, is moving along. Um, uh, the street was closed to per permits. Um, Is, is closed. Is closed. Yeah. Remains closed. Um, uh, the current um, anticipated uh, completion date is mid November and it's moving along down there. So, uh, big change and making that uh, much more direct connection between the uh, downtown and the waterfront. So, it's uh, a walkable loop now instead of putting you out at highway speeds on the Highway speeds on the other side of town. So, uh, the city has been awarded twenty thousand dollars from the state Department of Commerce to uh, update our critical areas ordinance. I've mentioned this uh, before. Mm -hmm. So that periodic update grant uh, will permit us to dig into that. These are our regulations for steep slopes and wetlands and habitat areas and aquifer protection and flooding we're already done with flooding so down to the other four on that and we're hoping to uh, collaborate with the county as much as we can to do 
the initial analyses and put our grant funds to, to joint use there since we're dealing with the same um, basic science uh, for our area. Um, the city administrator, Liana, left uh, at the start of this month. And so I'm functioning as the interim city administrator while trying to do this job to me. So the uh, there's a lot. Yeah, <laughs> six at now. There's a lot, yeah. Um, we have a uh, executive recruitment coming that will start the, the search for that, um, the full time replacement there. So that should be going, anticipating um, three months to one month time for uh, that recruitment process to play out. Fair. Thank you. Um, do you guys have the climate change in your work plan yet? I think I brought it up earlier this year because. I don't think it's even in our climate change is not even in our definitions in the city definitions. And um, I don't know if you've driven up to the dump lately or transfer site, transfer site. Uh, but a lot of trees have been cut. And our water treatment plan is that our. It looks like it needs some updating. And how much is that going to cost? I don't know that we have any estimates. For... It's very exposed now. Yeah. And that, and I, I really, uh, I guess one of the questions I have, and I, I'm not sure whose purview it is, but um, there were no trees left on the borders. Like, I thought the first uh, 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 act uh, um, said, you know, you should have leave trees along the street or something. Everything was cut up there. I don't know how the forest practices permitting goes. Is that city it's, property? It's located it's private property the city. within the city. Yeah. yeah. So if there's a conversion, if they're cutting uh, forest in order to convert it to a different land use, mm -hmm. then it's subject to these um, procedures, environmental procedures. If it's uh, uh, intended to remain in forest use, then it's um, under the jurisdiction of the DNR. But but our treat water treatment plan is on city property. Yes. Okay. Yeah, it looks very lonely out there. <laughs> My understanding is they're reforesting it. Is that correct? Yeah. Yeah. Who's, who owns it? Private owners. Private, private yeah. owners. Yeah. Just logged in. Okay. They own a lot of trees. I haven't been up there lately, so I haven't seen. I should take a drive up yeah. there. Oh, without my, you should. I was at, looking out my kitchen window. I'm like. Oh, it looks different. And the tree went, er, er. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, that's oh, why. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's a map. That's different. Uh, uh, I'll take, change, take a trip up there. Uh, uh, take your recycle. I, I, <laughs> do, I periodically do. But I have, it will be I, definitely different when the wind blows. Sure. I have a question. I read somewhere that washed out had plans to put a roundabout at the end, each end of the city on 14. Is that still in the works? Washdot doesn't necessarily have the plans. The city identified the potential need for uh, roundabouts at both ends of the city. And um, those projects, I believe, are on our um, longer range capital facilities plan or transportation improvement uh, program. We haven't done anything to advance the discussion about those. Uh, so is that in the city's purview or in? It'll be, a, it'll be a joint yeah. partnership on that. Yeah. Joint contract. They watched us been doing a lot of roundabouts on 14, as you know. I mean, yeah. Shugel and Camus, uh, Carson and so on. So they, they apparently like roundabouts now. <laughs> People are getting more used to them. Yeah, they're not so confused. Not going right through. Right. <laughs> there was a lot of that before. Yeah. yeah. If it slows down cars, it would be great. Yeah. If it slows down trucks, it would be great. Organize traffic and slow it down at yeah. the same time. So I think they're not a panacea, but they're often a good idea. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. if you have one at the west end of town, it would make it easier for trucks to get on to first. Right. Well, they can get on first, but then the the other way, yeah. if they and come in, so they can it there, It's yeah. easy to get on that way as well. Yeah. That's why well, we have a, the mitigation project that was done at the east end 
which was done for the Chinny Deer project. So I'm not sure that you can do a another project over a, something that you used as a mitigation project. I have a friend who is uh, now retired as the mayor of Carmel, Indiana, spelled like Carmel, California, but pronounced Carmel. And it's the roundabout capital of America because this guy interesting. was just nuts about roundabouts. And I think it's like this, the town of, I don't know, 10,000 people that's got 85 roundabouts or something like that. So I visited it once and it was it was a little confusing. Get busy. I got a little busy, but I see the point. <laughs> that's kind of an extreme case. And they're free. Yeah, to operate. Yeah, right. Where right. traffic traffic signals require right. to that's fall it. down yeah. storms. Mm -hmm. Yeah, right. Oh, no, that's like, that's a, that's another virtue. One of the considerations for roundabouts relates to the idea that both of those streets would be one ways, also. Mm -hmm. And uh, in our downtown planning effort in twenty twenty, mm -hmm. consultants evaluated um, traffic loads, um, and there. They said the sweet spot for community you know, like ours and the vehicles that are driving past businesses and is um, between 7,500 and 15,000 vehicles per day on that street. Total downtown between those two streets right now, we have something like 10,000. And so if we split that out and have um, traffic going only in one direction, that's, that's too well. Way. About five thousand each, and so that's the low end, seventy five hundred vehicle. Mm -hmm. So that was a part of it, is to make them one way streets. It it, does, it needn't be part of it, but it can be a consideration. Mm -hmm. in it. Right. That has all kinds of other implications for oh, life at street level oh, okay. towns. So, yeah, yeah. So that, that's where I think we want to have some serious discussion if that ever really got yeah, moving, because yeah, there's some major minuses to one way streets in terms of just life at street level. Yeah, it's traffic speed and business viability, you know, those, yeah. those things are all affected by that. <laughs> works, works, you know, engineers sometimes like it, but, but not necessarily everybody. Yeah. <laughs> Commuters would get to see both. <laughs> right. <laughs> we double yeah. your exposure for yeah, some. That's true. We're on that's true. For people going through town, they would get to see both streets, even if they don't eventually see first. But, yeah. Right. Yeah. Any other discussions? Didn't have any uh, on the um, noted on there, but we are moving forward with um, the first stage of design for the Lasher Street corridor. So engineers been hired there, and they're doing the, the survey work. I don't know if they've already done that, or what their exact schedule is there, but um, survey geotech. Um, Existing conditions covering those for last year, and um, we'll be ready to move into our uh, utility conflict uh, canopy preservation plan, the undergrounding plan, uh, soon. We've got uh, a consultant ready to go for that when the contract signs with the states and the consultant before they can start. But that'll be moving this winter. Keep you busy. Mm -hmm. Not currently a problem. <laughs> okay. Anything else? Okay, so you want a motion for adjournment? That would be fantastic. I will move, maybe we adjourn. Yeah. Second. 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 Did you get that sort broadband thing I sent you? That was interesting. Yeah. Light speed. We need to have a talk with Jeff about his length of meeting. <laughs> Well, I I saw I was like, what is there in this meeting? Yeah. Like, there's not that much. Not much. And I was looking at the last one. I was like, well, they only went like 54 minutes on the last meeting. I think keep this under an hour. <laughs> Good job. Good job. Yeah. What's what's a, what's ahead for our next couple of meetings? Um, continuation of the conditional use process. I'm not anticipating any um, permits uh, coming your way, so. Should be pretty slow um, for the next couple, and then going into next year with um, the ability, hopefully, to establish a work plan to um, guide your. You'll be back to doing one job. So <laughs> yeah, yeah. 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 you'll be back to doing the five. Yeah. <laughs> not not yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. true. City manager might need to count us too. Yeah.